Hello viewers, Nurdin here. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to take a look at the Asus N552VX, which is basically a multimedia oriented laptop. So let's find out if it's worth your money or not. Coming right after the intro, stay tuned. So thank you for bearing with me. Let's get over the spec sheet first. This laptop has got an i5 6300HQ processor, 8GB of DDR4 memory, NVIDIA GTX 950M graphics card with 4GB of VRAM, a 1080p EWV anti-glare display, a 1TB SATA storage, a 5200 mAh of battery and uh, up front we get the dual stereo speaker setup. In terms of design, the laptop has a simple but elegant look. The lid is made out of aluminum and has a backlit ASUS logo. The brightness of the logo corresponds to the display brightness and the logo cannot be switched on or off. So it is on when the display is on and it is off when the display is off. The main body is also made out of aluminum and colored silver. While the lid and the body is made out of aluminum, the bottom of the laptop, the belly is made out of plastic and it feels very cheap to the touch. There are four rubber parts on the belly to stabilize the laptop on any surface and they work very well. On the left side of the laptop, we get the power port, the ventilation grill, the mini HDMI, a full HDMI, a LAN port, a USB 3.0 port and a USB type C port. On the right side of the laptop, we get a Kensington key lock hole, a DVD writer, two USB 3.0 ports and a headphone microphone combo jack. On the front, we get five LED lights indicating the caps lock, the airplane mode, the hard disk, the battery and the laptop on or off state and on the left side of that we get the memory card reader slot. I personally am happy with the ports that I get on both sides, a huge plus point for me. The display itself is a 15.6 inch one and the resolution is 1080p. Though there are many options to choose from when it comes to display of ASUS N552. Out here in Asia region, you can only get the EWV variant, which means enhanced wide view, which is basically a TN panel of sort, and it has a good viewing angle compared to the other TN panels that you can find in the market. As the lid is made out of aluminum, there is very little flex to the display. The hinge is made out of plastic, I believe. The hinge cannot be opened with one hand, but it's rigid enough to keep the display in its position. There is a huge bezel around the screen compared to the other laptops that you can find in today's markets but I got used to it within no time. Moving on to the keyboard now. The keys are made out of plastic as I feel and there's colored silver to match the body color. They are backlit. The backlight is three levels of brightness so you can adjust them to your needs. They have a very good amount of travel of 1.8 millimeters. There is enough spacing between the keys and there is also a number pad which is very helpful. And on top of that number pad there is the power button and it has a light indicator to let us know about the current laptop state. The trackpad has got a smooth finish to it and it works just fine. It's spacious and well positioned under the keyboard. It has got a chamfered edge around it so you can easily differentiate it from the body. I haven't had any issues regarding accidental touches while typing. Clicks are okay, responsive we can say. Tracking is smooth, the Windows 10 shortcuts also work very fine. The webcam is a decent one. It is decent enough for making some video calls, social networking. Here is a sample for you guys to judge. This is how the webcam looks. Can record at 7 to 30 FPS, and um, there is nothing to complain about, and there is nothing to praise about also. Another thing, connectivity in this laptop is pretty good, pretty decent. There is no complaint on that matter. I haven't checked it with any software or any benchmarking, but uh, for my kind of usage, it's pretty fine, not giving any issues whatsoever. So I forgot to add this on the main video. So think of this as an amendment. The answer is laptops from ASUS is all about multimedia and they're truly majestic in that sense. Helping out the big display is an IC power and Bang and Olsen technology branded dual stereo speaker setup. Circular designs around the speakers which resemble sound waves and these are also the emblem of the N series laptops. The sound out of the speakers is forward facing and reflects on the screen. So the output is very loud and clear crispy sound. There is also a decent amount of bass depending on the surface you put the laptop on because the laptop is thick and this is the area where most of the laptop out there sucks. 
Multimedia was one of my priorities while choosing a laptop. This laptop has got a big screen, very good viewing angles and also got a dual stereo speaker setup. That's why content consumption is so much fun with this setup, believe me. Kudos to Asus for that. So it comes down to the performance round. So all this good design, the ports, the keyboard, the trackpad, it doesn't come to any good if the performance is not good, right? But there is nothing to worry about because this laptop is powered by an i5-6300 HQ processor. This is the higher clock version that you can find in the market. In most of the cases, the laptop comes with the U version that is the lower clocked one. But as in this case, day-to-day -day usage is quite smooth and convenient. Also that 8 gigabytes of memory helps in multitasking. Now that Nvidia GTX 950M graphics card helps you play some games in from medium to high settings depending on the games you are playing and can give you an adequate frame rate. But the main culprit of the laptop is I would say the hard disk, the SATA storage that came with the laptop. These GDs are not that great for their speed, but for their cheaper rate people still use them. So what happens is in this laptop it takes about 6 to 7 minutes to boot from a shutdown mode to the desktop. So this is quite a long time for a person that want to use his laptop conveniently. So that's why I do not shut the laptop completely down. I put it to sleep mode. I haven't played that many games. I have played Mafia 3, I have played GTA V and I have played uh, FIFA. There's the games I casually played and I'm not a hardcore gamer as you know. So I'm not giving any verdict on the performance round because I have to play some games. And please suggest me some games that I will play on this laptop and let you know. I will also put up a video after playing those games. The battery life in this laptop is insane. Well, not in a good way. It takes about three and a half hours to get down from 100% to 7%. As you all know, Windows only allows you to use the laptop when it's around 7%. You are using a laptop that gets down to 7% from 100% within three and a half hours. Also, when you are using it with the lowest brightness possible. But it takes about two hours to charge this laptop. Sometimes I get so frustrated that I wish I had bought another laptop instead of this one. But as you know, you cannot have all the things that you want in the world, right? I'm compromising on the battery side because I'm a guy that do not move a lot, that do not travel a lot. So most of the time I'm stationary at my home. So I have a wall socket near me and whenever I want, I can charge the laptop up. Now, do I recommend this laptop? Well, it depends. Because if you're a guy that moves a lot, this laptop will give you a hard time. So you must think on that before you choose to buy this laptop. But if you are a stationary one, if you play games occasionally, not all day, this laptop will serve you fine. Also, if you want that multimedia experience, this laptop will also come in very handy. So I researched about three or four months before buying this laptop. And I searched for a laptop that would serve all my needs. And this laptop is the one that I found in the market. So I will recommend this laptop for any guy in Bangladesh who is searching for a laptop at around 65 kbdt. This laptop will serve you fine. This laptop is a go. So thank you all for watching this review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you disliked it, let me know why you disliked it and suggest me how I can improve. Because you are the one that will make me better at this. And subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos. So thank you again, I'm Nuruddin here and I'm signing off.